good morning now previous session we have discussed about corrosion what is corrosion types of corrosion and electrochemical theory of corrosion so there we have seen what is wet corrosion right so wet corrosion is broadly classified into differential metal corrosion differential aeration corrosion and stress corrosion now let us discuss what is differential metal corrosion other corrosions one by one to start with differential metal corrosion as the name indicates differential metal corrosion means when two different metals are in contact with each other so before this what is the main principle behind this let us see when two metals with different electrode potentials are in contact with each other this differential metal corrosion arc is initiated i repeat in two different metals with different electrode potentials are in contact with each other differential metal corrosion is initiated so when two metals which are in contact with each other the metal which lies high in electrochemical series acts as anode and undergoes corrosion whereas the other metal which lies low in electrochemical series acts as cathode and thus unaffected so example for differential metal corrosion are steel uh, steel screws in brass or brass equipments lead tin solder around the copper wire when you have seen solder right so the lead and tin which is around the copper wire steel pipe steel pipe with copper plumbing copper plumbing means maybe copper tap right so i have just explain this with an example diagrammatic example so you can see here the copper bolt with steel nut so the copper bolt and steel nut steel is an alloy of iron okay so iron lies high in electrochemical series whereas copper lies low in electrochemical series so iron electrode potential less how much minus 0.44 copper electrode potential less plus 0.34 so therefore iron acts as anode and undergoes corrosion since copper acts as cathode this will be protected from corrosion okay iron acts as anode and undergoes corrosion whereas copper is unaffected acts as cathode and is unaffected so when this copper bolt still since steel nut is used wherever this copper bolt is is what, what happens since steel nut undergoes corrosion whichever equipment you use this this nut will become slow corroded and slowly becomes slow and the entire equipment may collapse or the part of equipment may collapse now similarly when here also okay and the next diagram also you can see that screw is getting corroded okay so one fine day what will happen since uh, due to rust or corrosion that part will become loose and it may tilt also so this is the reason both nut and do not prevent differential metal corrosion nut and bolt should be made up of same metal okay so in order to prevent this what are we going to do if you have a door latch or door handle if it is made up of you will get door handle of brass we get a door handle and the latch both of brass you get stainless steel you get aluminum right so if it is made up of if you want a brass you are going to use brass screws if it is of aluminum you are going to use aluminum screw if it is stainless steel you are going to use aluminum screw stainless steel screws they are not going to interchange for brass if you put screw stainless steel screws what will happen steel will act as iron i mean iron right screws will act as anode brass will have that handle will act as cathode screws will become loose one find the center handle may come into your hand so in order to prevent the differential metal corrosion you are going to use that handle uh, entire equipment with same metal okay so next let us see differential aeration corrosion so this differential aeration corrosion as name indicates differential aeration so differential metal means two differential two different metals differential aeration means single metal so when a metal is exposed to different oxygen concentration or electrolyte it forms a galvanic cell or oxygen concentration cell where the corrosion gets initiated as it is told a single metal so a part of metal is exposed to lesser oxygen concentration acts as anode 
and the part of metal is exposed to higher oxygen concentration acts as cathode. So, the part of metal acting as anode undergoes corrosion, whereas part of metal acting as cathode is protected from corrosion. So, this differential aeration you have two types of corrosion. One as water line, other one as pitting corrosion. Let us discuss one by one. Water line corrosion. So, the differential aeration corrosion you have many examples. Metal washers, buried pipelines, cables passing through and water lines, uh, water lines, I mean oil pipelines, etc. All these are because of differential aeration corrosion only. So, let us discuss what is water line corrosion. As shown in the diagram, first diagram, let us consider a metal rod dipped in water, right? So, the part of metal which is below water is in contact with lesser oxygen concentration, whereas part of metal which is above water level is in contact with higher oxygen concentration. So, both are in contact with oxygen only, but the metal is inside the water is in contact with dissolved oxygen, whereas part of metal is above water is in contact with atmospheric oxygen. Okay, the part of metal which is inside the water in contact with lesser oxygen concentration acts as anode and undergoes corrosion, protecting the other part of metal which is acting as cathode. Since corrosion initiates just below the water level, it is called as waterline corrosion. So, this type of corrosion can be seen in steel water tanks, ships, etc. So, ships, why ships? Because, so ships in part of ship will be under water, other part of ship will be above water. So, part of ship which is below the water will act as anode, undergoes corrosion, whereas part of ship above water will act as cathode and will be protected from corrosion. Okay. So, in order to protect the ship, what are we going to do? We are going to do sacrificial anodic method. We will discuss that in later stages. Right. So, next, next we have pitting corrosion. What is this pitting corrosion? So, why it is called pitting corrosion? We will see. As you have air everywhere, you have dust everywhere. So, if you have some metal surface, okay, metal surface, if some oil, dust or grease is deposited anywhere, okay. So, you have taken in the diagram also, some water particle is deposited. So, the part of metal which is below the water or oil or dust will uh, is in contact with less oxygen concentration compared to other part of the metal. So, when here single metal only. So, always remember differential aeration corrosion means single part of metal, single metal. Okay. So, here a part of metal which is below the dust or oil or grease is in contact with lesser oxygen concentration that acts as anode and undergoes corrosion protecting the other part of the metal which acts as cathode which acts as cathode okay so since this part of metal which is acting as anode uh, since it undergoes corrosion it leads in formation of pit it leads in formation of pit pit is nothing but a small hole or a small pore okay since it leads in formation of small pore or pit it is called as pitting corrosion so this type of corrosion leads in formation of small hole is called as pit therefore it is called as pitting corrosion so this type of corrosion occurs in especially in machinery so it may occurs, occur in lathe or workshop so any production industry you are going to use machineries so machineries what will happen oil grease is very must right so in, instead of applying near bearing while applying in the bearing it may spill somewhere on the part of the machinery so if it spills somewhere on the part of the machinery it should be cleaned immediately if you are not cleaning what will happen if you leave it for another 15 days or 20 days of a month so what will happen differential aeration corrosion or pitting corrosion will occur. So, once the pit is formed, what will happen? Rate of corrosion will be very, very, very fast. So, before pitting occurs, we are supposed to prevent this corrosion or stop this corrosion. Okay. So, this corrosion, pitting corrosion occurs in less aerated parts of machinery. So, next, in our next discussion, let us, we will discuss how, what are the various factors affect this 
rate of corrosion so rate of corrosion as uh, we have discussed uh, depends upon size okay depends upon corrosion product etc there are various factors that we'll discuss in our next session thank you